Rock and roll leather jacket, red lips, smoky eyes, high heels and leather pants. American singer, songwriter, rhythm guitarist for hard rock and heavy metal band Hailstorm, Lizzie Hale has been voted by Revolver as one of the hottest chicks in rock and metal. She's the first female Gibson brand ambassador and her band has won a Grammy and has been nominated. She won the Dimebag Daryl Shredder Award in 2016 and the Inspire Award at She Rocks. Lizzie started playing piano at five years old. Her parents moved around Pennsylvania a lot. They initially lived in a little cabin in the woods with no neighbors for 10 miles in any direction on the Appalachian Trail in the mountains. Together with her parents and brother, they shared one bedroom. As she got older, well, she needed friends. They moved to a 20-acre farm that had horses, sheep, chickens, the works. She grew up in the 90s but was obsessed with 70s and 80s hard rock, including Black Sabbath and Cinderella. Ronnie James Dio was in fact her first introduction to metal vocals. When she was 11, some of the neighborhood kids invited Lizzie to a sleepover and asked her to bring some of her favorite music. So she happily took her Alice Cooper and Ronnie James Dio albums. Let's just say the girls were not impressed. I mean, they had posters of the Backstreet Boys and Mariah Carey. Lizzie returned home after the sleepover a little disappointed, thinking that her life was over and she'd never make friends. But her father, who she credits a lot for sparking her taste in music, was overjoyed. He said, This is great! They love that music because it's popular. If you're listening to your music purely because you love Fun fact, she loved singing by herself in the farm. She would sing out loud and when the breeze picked up and moved the leaves, she would assume they were the audience clapping. Although Lizzie was always a good singer, her greatest fear was raising her voice. She struggled with self-confidence and just longed to be invisible. In fact, during a fire safety lesson at kindergarten, her teacher made the class shout fire fire during a simulation. The rest of her classmates' voices could be heard down the hall, but Lizzie's voice was barely an audible wimple. Funny to imagine that she now makes a living out of yelling. Up until that point, she was constantly trying to emulate her male band icons playing and singing, including Van Halen. And although these men sparked her internal fire, gave her direction, and taught her how to take pride in her weirdness, Lizzie's mom, however, who was a rock fan herself, helped her transcend. She introduced her to the chicks of rock and roll and bought her around 10 CDs of Joan Jett, Lita Ford, Pat Benatar, and Blondie to show her that it wasn't just the men who were rockers. Women could rock too. And that changed everything. Now she had a blueprint. Examples of women who played instruments, rolled with the boys, in the road, wrote songs about sex, now her dream was possible. They were the stars that would guide her through the darkness and give her ammunition. And so when people tried to discourage her, saying she'd never fit in this business or ever get on radio, these women became her arsenal. She could tell those people to politely fuck off and keep moving forward because these women had done it. She and her brother, who is still their drummer, named their band Hailstorm on the way to a talent show where they performed a five-minute song they wrote, even with a drum solo. They won third place. They lost to a tap dancing cowgirl, who Lizzie says was cuter. Fun fact, being a shy girl when Lizzie was around 15, she knew she had to push harder to develop the kind of stage presence that she admired in her idols. So instead of looking at the entire audience, she would pick out one person at a time and literally stare them down. Brother Ramsey sees no dancing, he does not dance at the party. Gave her a sense of power and pushed her out of her shyness. Lizzie has had some incredible support from her parents. When she and her brother developed this tunnel vision to be rock stars, her parents were initially terrified. But they saw this obsessive fire in her eyes and they knew that the only way forward was to support their kids' dreams and keep them out of the gutter. They bought Lizzie her first guitar at 16 and gave up a lot of comfort so their kids could pursue their dreams. They also endured a lot of shit from teachers and other parents. Mr. Hale, your kids are worshipping the devil! Gigs in the corner of Bob! Bars, malls, and funerals? Shouldn't they be getting a real job? An education? A backup plan? First riff she learned to play on the guitar was Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath. Her dad is actually a bass player and has been playing since he was 13. He joined Hailstorm for a full year and a half. Her father actually built a rotating upside down counterclockwise spinning drum set kit for her little brother and her parents worked with her band until shit got crazy. Jim Rock Crew, the first and only YouTube channel to feature inspirational stories of fit rock and metal musicians, has just announced their goal to hit 666,666 subscribers. They would like to thank all current subscribers for their love and support and also encourage subscriber phobics who are enjoying this video to subscribe. Lizzie credits her parents' encouragement to the reason why she was always a good kid. She says if they had acted out or discouraged her passion, she would have probably acted out, did drugs, or hung out with the wrong kids in rebellion. Fun fact, the first Gibson she ever bought was a tobacco boss Les Paul custom when she was a teenager. She says she was a terrible waitress but worked super hard to save all her tips as she could buy the guitar.
Throughout the years, Lizzie's diet and exercise regimen has evolved. She eats relatively healthy, mostly plant-based, and eats as close to nature as possible. She stays away from processed food and believes in quality over quantity. She doesn't believe in fat diets or counting calories and makes sure that she's getting good quality protein, hydrating veggies, and whole fruit. One of her favorite things to eat, banana and avocado mashed together. One of the weirdest things she tried was sea oceans. It was a little spiky guy, looked like someone squirted toothpaste on a plate, but it tasted like fish. That's what she said. She treats meat like ice cream on holiday. Her meat is usually good quality from local farms. Lizzie tries to stay away from refined sugar, dairy, and bread, including fried foods when she's on the road, as she feels like they rob her of her energy and nutrients which ultimately impact her voice. She drinks at least three liters of water a day and carries around a camelback bottle with a built-in straw to make it easier to choke down the water and refills it three times so she can keep track. She sometimes adds a little lemon or Himalayan salt to spice it up. Although she eats clean, she believes in balance and enjoys Diet Coke pizza and cider donuts. Okay, what the fuck are cider donuts? Can someone please let me know in the comments? She always has mini shakes from a company called Ampo on tour. They're basically 400 calorie meal replacement shakes that are fast digesting because she doesn't like to eat heavy before playing on stage. Interesting fact, Lizzie was diagnosed with asthma when she was 11 years old and has battled with respiratory infections all her life. She's very susceptible to wheat and dairy allergies, so she avoids those pre-show to keep her airway healthy. Lizzie is addicted to coffee and she says she has to make a conscious effort to reduce her caffeine intake to just two cups a day as the acidity and the dehydrating effects really fuck with her voice. Too much caffeine also messes with her sleep. She's also a tea drinker and likes rooibos, chais and the occasional chamomile. She's not a fan of green teas because it makes her nauseous on an empty tummy. One of the things she says that has helped her vocal health immensely on the road is stopping all eating and drinking at least four hours before bed. This prevents acid reflux especially in a moving bus and helps her sleep better. Speaking of tour bus, did you know that their tour bus caught fire on the way to play a gig in New England. No one was harmed, thankfully, but there were 15 foot flames and everything was charred. They lost a lot of stuff that day, but were so grateful that everyone was unharmed. Lizzie tries to get in at least 8 to 10 hours of sleep so her voice can properly recover. She also warms up with metal straws and does salt water goggles. When it comes to alcohol, Lizzie now calls herself a monk and has a no drinking until the end of the tour rule. In the past, she would go out with the boys from the band and do shots of tequila, wake up the next morning and do it again. There's a side to her called Night Lizzie, which comes out after a bottle of wine. She has to be really careful not to overdo alcohol because she becomes someone she doesn't really want to be. She says in a letter that although some singers and bands can still carry out the drug and alcohol soaked fantasies of the 80s rock stars, the ones who are serious about making a career in music are usually the sober, practicing their skills, getting a full night's sleep kind of rock stars. In fact, one of those serious rock stars said to her, you know what's more fun than getting wasted every night? Getting high from hitting those high notes every fucking night. That said, she does believe in balance and enjoys beer and red wine in moderation. Lizzie says in a post that she hates gyms and exercise, but she's found a few things that she absolutely loves. She walks everywhere, about 5 to 10 miles around towns and cities. She loves jump rope, carries it everywhere on and off tour, and gets in about 30 to 45 minutes whenever she can. Stage shows where she burns about 300 calories during a 90 minute rock set. She's jumping, running, squatting, singing with her core while holding a 12 pound guitar and 7 inch heel. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Can we talk about her heels for a second? Just look at that. How does she even walk let alone perform in those. So her advice to get comfy in heels, practice and also get stripper heels. She says they build sturdy, made for dancing and are actually really well balanced. Yep, I'm not convinced. What is even more fascinating is that Lizzie does this flamingo move with her guitar where she stands on one foot for a long time. Moving on. I did pull up one of her old workouts and it looks like a combination of yoga stretches, sprint intervals and circuit training with weights, all of which are great for active stage performers. Although this was around 2014, I haven't really seen seen any newer posts on her workout. But one thing she's kept constant, sex. Yep, she says it's fun, great rewards. I've actually heard of women who keep their fitness trackers on while bouncing just to measure their calorie bone. When Lizzie was a teenager, she would have little anxiety and panic attacks and also bouts of depression. Her teacher, scared and unsure of what was happening, would send her home from school. She has a history of anxiety and depression in her family for years, but she only recognized those symptoms later when they plagued her again. A few years ago, Lizzie almost lost her voice. She was struggling with hitting high notes that would be easy for her in the past, so much so that she had to cancel the rest of her tour because she couldn't even speak. While she received a lot of love from fans when this happened, she got an equal amount of hate. The battle between good 
and evil got so bad due to people on her side reporting the shit comments on Facebook that Facebook actually shut her page down for a few days. To make things worse, she gained this squeak in her voice that had become impossible to control or avoid. She was eating well, doing her vocal warm-ups, taking care of her voice from vocal coaching she'd had in the past. She went to a few vocal doctors who put a camera down her throat. Nothing. There was nothing wrong with her voice. This really scared her. Her voice wasn't working and she couldn't figure out why. She was ashamed, embarrassed. She cried over letting people down. I mean, she was at the top of her game. And now, her confidence was shot. She felt lost and alone, dreaded going back on tour and spiraled into depression. She then made the decision to take vocal lessons again. Her new vocal coach, Rob Anderson, worked with big names like Chris Cornell, Axel Rose, Lenny Kravitz and more. Mr. Anderson asked her for her age and said right away. Well, that explains a lot. Apparently, when female vocalists hit 30, it is completely normal to experience vocal changes, much like puberty or growing pain. Through that dark period of change, Lizzie learned her new voice and also expanded her range by a whole fucking octave. How cool is that? She learned to mourn the loss of her old voice and embrace the new voice. Fast forward to the pandemic, Lizzie found herself once again revisiting anxiety and depression. Not being able to tour, sitting at home ordering pizza and beer turned her into someone she couldn't recognize or connect with anymore. Although she was going to therapy before the lockdown, she doubled down on her sessions and started to write songs about exactly how she was feeling. The therapy along with her venting her emotion through songwriting not only pulled her out of depression, it helped several of her fans pull through their own dark period. Lizzie learned how to balance her personality with being both vulnerable and a beacon of hope to people. Now, growing up in a Christian household made it very challenging for Lizzie to be truly comfortable in owning everything that she was. In fact, she only recently disclosed that she is bisexual. Many of her songs and posts on social media encourage her fans to be unapologetic about who they really are. In her song, she says, being yourself can make people uncomfortable, but be proud of that and own it. She says, you don't need to censor yourself just to comfort someone else's ignorance. You are not responsible for anyone else's happiness. Even though she's been voted one of the hottest rock stars, she says that it's not how you look, it's what you do that defines your beauty. While she expected backlash from parents and people on her songs about sex, she's had a massive positive response from her young fans and their parents alike applauding her sexual empowerment and for being an inspiration to people who felt oppressed about their sexuality. She's also had a lot of parents writing to thank her for helping their kids out of depression as her music includes a lot of themes on improving mental health. Her shows draw in a lot of women. Fun fact, she holds the record in the band for signing the most number of boobs. Also, did you know the Hailstrom was the last band to share the stage with Ronnie James Dio for his final performance in 2009. Dio was very connected to his fans and really cared about their feelings. He personally signed everything for his fans after that show and then told Lizzie this. Lizzie, you're never gonna remember this venue. You're never gonna remember the faces that you saw tonight, but they are gonna remember meeting you for the rest of their life. So you make it good for every single one of them. Lizzie never forgot that and made that her own personal mission. She has a lot of love and respect for her fans. During her tour with Evanescence, she wrote love letters every night with some pics in it, signed it, put lipstick stain on it, and even sealed it with sealing wax. She would throw that letter out to the crowd for a lucky winner. The letters would sometimes just say, hey, I love you, I appreciate you, or some lyrics and poetry. That trend became its own monster, and now at the end of every show, she gets pelted with love letters from fans. She did this to take another step forward, to spread positivity through her platform. She says that when she started out at 13, she had a lot of questions. She didn't have an uncle in the industry to help her navigate problems. She remembers and appreciates the few people that took their time out for her, and so she wants to pass the torch on to young girls who can see that there are women who can do what she does and being proud of it even when faced with adversity. It makes that bridge to their dream just a little shorter. Another fun fact, a fan once gave her a little box with a tampon inside that said, would you use this and then let me know when you do so I know that what I gave you was inside of you. She's very proud of the genre she chose, considering that she's been an old school rocker all her life. In the beginning, when her band started, a lot of people tried to convince her to be Kelly Clarkson or ditch the guys, you know, you don't need a band. In fact, everybody seemed to be wanting to pull her in a different direction and drag her off the path she was carving. But she took that as encouragement and luckily had her parents' support. She always knew that she wanted to sing rock music. She said she would rather be part of a community and have a little underground club where they all wear black t-shirts. Her passion for music is her driving force. She was never chasing success or fame. The the fact that she's making a living out of doing something that she loves is her greatest joy. Her message to the world, own your weird, make it your superpower, love yourself first and from there put out some love. Tell someone random that they're awesome or compliment them on something because that can really impact someone's life. What a rock star! If you want to know how metal musicians like Tatiana Shmailyuk from Ginger and Doyle deal with negative comments, go ahead and check this video right here.